Distinguished guests and ladies and gentlemen, I'm indeed humbled uh, given the very distinguished and preeminent speakers that you've heard from today. And would like to thank the Western Australian Government, uh, Perth USA uh, Centre and Defence West for putting on such a great and seminal uh, conference. The theme of this year's conference, an era of new and renewed partnerships, is at the heart of my role and what I seek to bring to North Rock Grumman's activity here in Australia. When I was invited to here to speak about prime relationships, I reflected on my many lessons I have learned about partnerships and collaboration over my career in the military and the private sector. Successful organisations don't succeed by themselves. Similarly, it is always all about people, um, about the quality of engagement and establishing trust and respect. My nearly four decades in the Royal Australian Air Force, I was very privileged to actually run many big programs, including uh, the Collins Class Submarine Program. I'm likely to be the only Air Vice Marshal that knows what a full cycle docking is and could probably express an opinion about where it should be conducted, but I'll leave that for later at the end of the day. Um, I think that uh, those lessons learnt, those big programs that I was responsible for when I was in defence and uh, also in the public sector, taught me many things about partnerships. From the mateship and camaraderie that goes um, in with military service, to the partnerships that are required in delivering critical defence capability, through to the critical role partnerships and alliances at a national, international level play. As I noted earlier, partnerships must be built on trust and respect, which is the heart of successful collaboration. Collaboration built on trust and respect enables complex tasks to be undertaken and difficult issues to be effectively confronted and resolved. Partnerships also facilitate access to the right people, tools and skills to achieve the collective goals, effectively being more than the sum of the individual parts. As the head of North Rock Grumman in Australia, I will be focusing on establishing the strategic partnerships that will be key to delivering innovative system of system solutions to the Australian Defence Force and required to help build and sustain a sovereign industry base here in Australia. From my perspective, these strategic partnerships cannot be for the sole purpose of gaining a commercial edge. Rather, there is an increasingly important strategic dimension to the collaboration required to deliver the complex and innovative solutions required by the ADF and building a sovereign industry capability to develop and sustain them. More than ever, defence industry and academia are adding, its, adding to the nation's strategic weight. This means being responsive to the pace of technology, technological change and the emerging threats that will challenge our national security community now and into the future. It is imperative that as an industry and government leaders, we embrace a more collaborative approach to ensure the sovereign industry base and workforce supporting our defence force are capable of delivering and sustaining the ADF's capability. In some cases, this will mean finding new ways to work together both nationally and internationally to ensure our security forces are equipped with the innovative, interoperable, adaptable and secure technology to defend our national interests in, in an uncertain future. But collaboration is not without its challenges. There are regulatory and policy obstacles that currently prevent partnerships reaching their full potential. We all have a role to play in ensuring that the policy frameworks we operate within are fit for purpose. And wherever possible, industry and government need to work collaboratively to address these issues. I am confident this is not an insurmountable challenge and with the right representation from government, defence and industry, we can develop and refine the policies and collaborative framework to allow the required partnerships to flourish. While the policy and regulatory environments may be challenging, the technical challenges that are inherent in delivering the complex systems of systems that are required to be adapted to and leverage Australia's fourth and fifth generation capability is also a um, significant challenge. This integration effort involves more than just plugging in Australia's unique air, sea and land systems together, but also needs to ensure that we are interoperable with our coalition partners and allies. This will ensure that Australia can fight above its weight 
is seen to be a strategic partner of choice and provides greater options to government and to our allies. I think this is a challenge that we all relish and one that will really rely heavily on the talents and expertise of our sovereign industry partners and academia as we work together to develop these innovative systems domestically, leveraging reach back to our parent companies, but tailored to Australia's unique force structure requirements with an eye to export opportunities. In my experience in running large and complex defence programs, adapting an enterprise approach will be key to delivering these innovative system of system solutions. This must involve the engagement of the end user customer, Navy, Army and Air Force, the buyer, capability acquisition and sustainment group and industry throughout the life cycle from cradle to grave. The enterprise should be aligned strategically and in purpose and understand that compromise will always be required to ensure op optimal outcomes are achieved. Industry must be considered as a strategic partner and be prepared to take on the role of the steward of capabilities with defence. This is not just meeting contractual requirements, but having skin in the game. Underpinning this, the industry element must be strong and enduring industry partnerships, where international ply, primes play a fundamental role in developing and sustaining sovereign industry base. And I think CDF's comments today about more uh, weren't lost on me in that regard. Similarly, many of the systems of system solutions required by the ADF will require primes to collaborate to ensure seamless integration of capability. The commercial barriers to achieving this in the past must be addressed to ensure the ADF achieves the capability that they deserve. Implementing these complex systems of systems capabilities for Australia offers a unique opportunity for these groups to forge enduring and resilient partnerships that will enable Australia to be agile and adapt to the challenging and uncertain future uh, we currently face. The states will also play a key role in fostering collaboration and creating conditions for successful sovereign industry outcomes. And it would be remiss of me not to discuss our Western Australian engagement while I'm here in Perth. Western Australia sits strategically in an important position, both for Australia and its allies, and for us as defence primes. Its geographic position allows Australia to project its presence into the increasingly important Indian Ocean and Asia. And as noted through this, throughout this morning, this is a region of growing tensions where India is strengthening its Indian Ocean naval presence. The vitally important Persian Gulf region, which uh, the vast bulk of the world's oil travels, is once again developing as a global flashpoint. To the north and west of this state sit some of the world's most vital shipping lanes, which connect the Indian and Pacific Oceans. Then there are the valuable marine resources that lie in Australia's vast inclusive economic zone off the west coast and the state's advantageous position for space industries. So it is not an overreach to say that Western Australia is at uh, the country's front line in a region that will play a central role in global relations in the coming decade. But the state's remoteness from the East Coast, which I'm sure many of the audience see as a blessing rather than a curse, means we need to continue developing Western Australia's defence industry so they can operate in its own right. Building on the already substantial defence, natural resource and manufacturing capability here will require its own sets of partnerships between primes, state governments, local industry, academia and the federal government. I'm pleased to note that both the Defence Minister, the Minister for Defence Industry, hail from Western Australia, as does the Shadow Minister for Defence Industry. This bodes well for the future of defence industry partnerships in the States. Northrop Grumman's ambitions in Australia are to continue to foster and grow the sovereign industrial base through strategic partnerships with Australian industry and academia. This will involve a strategy that looks to the whole life cycle of engagement, from acquisition to sustainment and then leveraging into global supply chains. We already work widely with an array of Australian small to medium sized business who every day support our supply chain in their manufacture and sustainment of world leading materials and innovative technology. These partnerships aim to deliver more than 300 million in Australian industry content over the next five years. The opportunities associated with effectively engaging small to medium enterprise has also been reiterated many times today. 
Working collaboratively with our local partners lets us tap into the skills and local knowledge they hold. And when combined with the academia and the depth and breadth of Northrop Grumman globally, will ensure we can provide innovative solutions that best meets the ADF's need now and into the future. At Northrop Grumman, we are proud to work with the world leading um, subject matter experts, such as Quick Step Technologies, who provide innovative composite uh, capability for us and are actually playing a, a very large role in the Joint Strike Fighter and will help sustain that, sustain that capability for years to come. We also partner with CEA Technologies, one of the country's leading military electronic systems and radar companies, and Electro-Optic Systems, who is a world leader in space information intelligence services, optical sensor units and remote weapon systems. Both of these companies are globally competitive and operate globally. These are just some of the crucial local partners that allow us to carry out our efforts in Australia. As a global prime, we are committed to helping and fostering the sovereign industry base in Australia. We're also committed to working with the government and defence to help refine and further develop the policy uh, to best deliver on these outcomes. We must all work collaboratively to ensure that the policies and sovereign industry outcomes required are aligned to a shared strategy that we can deliver to. If we achieve this, then industry and academia will clearly contribute to Australia's strategic weight, nationally and globally, and our defence will achieve the innovative solutions that it will need to fight and win in an uncertain future we face as a nation and with our allies. This collaboration will underpin Australia's role as a crucial partner in the Indo-Pacific and a strategic partner of choice. Once again, I would like to thank you for having me here today and I look forward to the ensuing discussion. Thank you very much.